good one. And what do we think about... Oh, you're, you want to do your whistle? Alright, let's do our whistles next. Perfect. Can you show it to everybody? So Santini's going to come by and show you her signature whistle. Um, so you know, really quiet, you might be able to hear it. And Marina's going to do hers as well. Um, it's a really high-pitched whistle. You guys hear that? Or is it too far away? Here. Ladies, what do we think? Let's go over to the rocks and do it. Come on this way. Alright. See if they'll fall in here. Good girls, come on. What do you think? See if they can do it a little bit closer to you guys. Santini looks like it was already, she was already offering. What's this one? You guys hear that from her? Yeah. Good job, Tina Bean. Very nice. Didn't hear a thing. I didn't hear it. It's very, very high pitched. <laughs> so a dolphin's signature whistle is kind of like their name. They don't use it the exact same way we do. Um, but it is used to identify each individual dolphin. And actually, one of our research projects right now um, is to be able to come up with a graphic representation of each of our dolphin signature whistles um, and monitor how they learn those whistles during the first couple years of their lives. So they actually are more or less taught their signature whistle by their mom. <laughs> Any other questions? Do they talk to each other as much as they talk to you? Definitely, yeah. So um, their, their hearing is excellent. Uh, sound travels much faster and further through water than it does um, through air. So they uh, use their hearing as one of their primary senses, and those clicks and whistles are definitely um, communication between each other. But then they also use it um, for echolocation as well, even um, sometimes even more so than communicating with each other. It's just another sense to help them navigate their environment. So Marina, can you show me clicks? Yay! Very nice job. Good. And can you show them what you use it for? Can we find a present? So when they produce those clicks from their blowhole, they go out into the environment and then they bounce off of different objects. So whether it's you know another dolphin, an obstacle in the way, fish, or whatever, they come back to the dolphin's lower jaw as an echo. Um, and the clicks go through the lower jaw. Oh, nice job, Marina. She brought me a rock. Oh. Very nice. If you go down to the bottom of the lagoon and use that echolocation to find it. Uh, but like I was saying, the clicks come back through their lower jaw, and then they go into their inner ear, and that inner ear works with their brain to produce a virtual image of whatever they're echolocating on. Oh. That's a beautiful leaf. I'll wear it right here. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Good job. Here, I gotta stick it in there. There we go. There we go. I'm wearing it. Good job. Beautiful. Very nice. Um, and that echolocation is really precise. Um, and as you can imagine, when they're swimming in you know, um, water out in the open ocean, it might be dark, it might be murky. So even though their vision is excellent, both above and below the water, that may not be their best um, sensory input option. So, yes, you guys are very cute right now. What do you think? What if I bring your buckets to the rocks? We can get closer to people. You guys want to play some games with them? Sure. Yeah. I come around? All right, cool. What do you think, girls? Let's go this way, okay? All right. 